have a part to play. You ain't waiting on God. God is waiting on you to stir up what he put on the inside of you. Everything you need is found in Jesus. And the good news is, is that you can have as much of Jesus as you want. Hi there, my friends. I hope that you are having an amazing day. Thank you for joining us once again for our Women Who Dared study, where we are talking about some of the amazing women in the Bible who dared to live out their faith in God in ways that now teach us how to live our lives both bravely and beautifully. Today, we're gonna be talking about one of the most famous women of the Bible, but usually we only talk about her during Christmas. <laughs> this being Mary, the mother of Jesus. So let's jump right in and read our passage for today. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So summed up, Mary is greeted by an angel, Gabriel, and he has a message for her. Basically says, hi Mary, God thinks you're amazing. You are going to have a baby, even though you're a virgin, and that baby is going to be the son of God, and you're going to call him Jesus. If we really pause and think about it, this would be just a little overwhelming, right? Well, at least Gabriel took the pressure off of having to pick the name of the Son of God, right? Just call him Jesus. Who? Well, thank you so much, Gabriel. <laughs> So here the angel is revealing to Mary the news that in her womb she will carry the Savior of the world, the one who will bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom for the captives, release prisoners from darkness, give beauty for ashes, joy instead of mourning, and praise instead of despair. He will shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death and guide their feet into the path of peace. He will revive the hearts of the lowly in spirit, rebuild the places long devastated, places devastated for generations. He will replace shame with blessing and rejoicing. He will give life, life to the fullest, and he will make the way for eternal life for all who believe in him. So in a nutshell, Mary, God is going to place his most precious possession in your care. Wow. <laughs> His son, the savior of the world, Jesus, will be your responsibility. What is Mary's response to this overwhelming, life-altering, <laughs> responsibility-laden news? We see it there in verse 38 that we just read. She says this, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Her response is so humbling. I am the Lord's servant. You know, this changes everything for me. And her response is, I am the Lord's servant. This responsibility is too great for me. Are you sure you've chosen correctly? I mean, maybe you got the wrong address, Gabriel. Yet her response, I am the Lord's servant. This makes things really complicated for me, for Joseph, for our families. And her response, I am the Lord's servant. What a powerful example for us from a 13-year-old girl who lived 2,000 years ago. I am the Lord's servant. 
What is your response when God shows up on the scene in your life and he asks something of you that is bigger than you think you can handle? I don't know what God has been whispering to your heart lately, but I can almost guarantee that he's been whispering something because that's what happens when we're connected to Jesus. When we're in relationship with Christ, there will be times that the Holy Spirit asks us to do complicated, bold, and challenging thing. So here's a question. What has God been whispering to your heart lately? Where has he shown up with a divine interruption and asked you to do or say something that seems maybe uh, a little crazy? Is what he asking of you going to change everything? Maybe he's asking you to break up with that boyfriend or step back from a friendship because at the end of the day, it's just not healthy for you. Maybe he's asking you to begin to tithe or take your first step of giving back to God with your finances. Or perhaps he's asking you to forgive that person that hurt you. Oh, maybe not start up a best friend relationship with them again, but yes, to forgiving them, to dropping that grudge. Or is God challenging you to step out in some areas and you're thinking to yourself, he has got the wrong person. <laughs> He's supposed to be asking that girl or that person, not me. I don't feel qualified. Is he asking you to maybe start a life group? to talk to that person that you work with about Jesus, to share your story, or maybe to begin the adoption process, or maybe start that nonprofit, or apply for that job, or speak up for that friend or that person that can't speak up for themselves. Or maybe you're thinking to yourself, what God is asking of you is going to make things really complicated, maybe with family or coworkers or friends. Um, maybe you're supposed to go back to school and, and find a part-time job instead of a full-time job. Maybe he's asking you to talk with that estranged family member that no one else is talking to. Maybe he's asking you to not go to those parties anymore with that group of friends. Perhaps he's asking you to stop that habit that everyone else is doing and you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Maybe he's been speaking to your heart about talking to that family member about Jesus. I don't know, it could be a bunch of different things. So let me ask that question again with those thoughts in mind. Where has God shown up with the divine interruption and asked you to do or say something that seems a little crazy? With that in mind, what has your response been? Has it been, um, I don't think that's God. <laughs> that's probably my own thoughts. Or I don't think I can do that, God. I'm afraid. What if people make fun of me? What if I lose somebody or something that is important to me? Or how about this one? What if I fail? What if I make people mad? In these moments where God is asking us to step out in our faith, I want us to remember Mary's humble, beautiful response. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. You know, as we wrap up our time together, I want to leave you with one thought. You know, sometimes we don't understand why God would ask certain things of us. We can maybe view his ask or his request of us as something to be feared or even maybe sometimes as a punishment. Well, in our passage that we're looking at today, we see there are two separate times when the angel tells Mary that she is, this word, favored. Now, I wanted to draw our attention to this word because oftentimes in our Western culture and mindset, when we see the word favored, we can tend to associate this with a life of ease or perhaps I'm just a happy, or easy-go-lucky life, but I actually think the opposite can be true as well. Favor actually comes with responsibility and trust. I'm sure Mary would tell us that favor, yes, comes with joy. I mean, hello, she had a front row seat to so many miracles, but I think she would also tell us that it comes with things like loneliness, uncertainty, pain, loss, great responsibility, and probably some fear. I mean, Mary saw the miraculous, but she also gave birth in a barn in a town away from home. She then had to flee to Egypt for fear of her child being killed. She had the pressure of raising the Son of God. I mean, don't mess it up, Mary, no pressure, right? 
Eventually then, she saw her son ridiculed, falsely accused, beaten until he was unrecognizable as a man, and then hung on a cross and murdered. So yes, favor comes with some unwelcome friends. But I also believe Mary would say, it's all worth it. Worth every heartache, every challenge, I do it over and over and over again. Why? Because God's favor also brings with it purpose, destiny, redemption, love, grace, joy, and a depth and an insight of God's goodness that is simply undeniable once you've experienced it. So maybe, just maybe, what God is asking of you is actually a sign of His favor on your life. Just know this, that He will be with you as you step out in faith. So let me leave you with this challenge today. Can we all dare to be like Mary and say, God, I am your servant. Whatever you ask and whatever it might be, I am in. I am your servant, I'm your girl. Even if it's complicated and I'm fearful and I feel overwhelmed, give me the strength to step into all that you have for me. Let me take a second and pray for you before we go into discussion. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the example of Mary. God, I pray that you would give us the courage, the strength, and the wisdom, God, to understand that your favor on us isn't always gonna mean that we live a life of ease, God, but that we will have the strength that we need to walk into the things that you are asking us to do. We love you. We say collectively today that we are your girls. We are your servants. God, and we pray that your word that you have for us would be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen.